if you have a beehive ready to go with frames and foundation in it uh, ready to receive your swarm or nook uh, do not let it set outside like you see this hive here if if there if there are no bees in it do not let it sit outside unless you have a screen in the entrance dirt daubers will get in there and they will build nest on that foundation and uh, the only way that you can you cannot scrape it off the only way you can correct that problem is with a knife cut out the dirt dauber and get some foundation and press it onto that hole that you cut out so um, uh, if you leave your hive set outside, you think maybe a swarm will go in it. Well, I'll guarantee you dirt daubers will. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about swarms, and you can go get a swarm. You can do it, and it's fun. It really is fun. Uh, it'll be an experience you will not forget, and you'll be you'll be uh, 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 sending me a comment how, how, how much fun it was. Now I'm going to tell you how bees react to different situations when you collect a swarm, okay? Now, um, first of all, uh, in your community, go into the, dis the police dispatcher and tell them that if someone calls them and they've got a swarm to give them your name and number, the first people that, uh, when the public walks out and they see a swarm hanging on the tree limb, they panic, and they will call the police or the termite control company. So give those people your name and number, and you can go out and get a swarm. Now, uh, if it's if it's up high, uh, uh, when I say high, uh, if it's high enough that you can reach it with a pole, these uh, uh, electrical conduit pipes, they will countersink into each other and you can reach up who knows 20 feet with them and the the pipe on the on the top you can bend it around get you a pillowcase and make a loop in that pillowcase and thread that pillowcase onto that loop now you can uh, with that pole you can get that pillowcase underneath the main part of the swarm and bump the limb provided it's not you know a great big limb and most limbs won't be you bump the limb and the majority of the bees will and the queen will fall into that pillowcase now you you promptly very promptly like this is the pole you very promptly let it down that's 90 degrees isn't it and that will seal off the bees in the pillowcase. Now, hold them there for a while. Uh, uh, don't let them out immediately. And let's say you have your hive down on the ground ready to put the bees in. Uh, let them calm down. If you open that hive, if you open that pillowcase too soon, they'll fly right back to the where they come from. Uh, please wear protection when you do this. Now, when you bump them, now they'll get on. They'll get on your case under this circumstances. So be sure and wear protection. But uh, after you've got them in there and and you've let them uh, uh, settle down, I don't know five minutes. Then you can put that pillowcase, the hole, the entrance of that pillowcase, in front of the hive, and and shake them in front of the hive. Okay. Now. Uh, uh, another way, oh, lost my bucket, wait a minute, all right, get you a, get you a three gallon bucket like this that did not have chemicals in it, be sure, cut you a big hole out of the center of the lid and hot glue some door screening to that. That makes that's lightweight and uh, makes a wonderful swarm bucket. If the limb 
is is where you can shake the bees into the bucket and wear protection on this. Now they 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 too uh, can and and will get on your case. So now I'm gonna show you another another method. Uh, and and this is so simple and nice. This this box uh, of paper uh, reams of paper come in it, and you can get this at many many different businesses. They throw them out, the free of charge. Now watch this. Uh, uh, I've already cut the entrance down here. Uh, okay. Now I already cut the entrance here, and you can open this up. And if, if the swarm is on the ground or close to it, then uh, there's your entrance for the bees. Once the, the big majority of them go in there, you can simply just push that cardboard back like that and it will hang. And uh, I, hope, I hope you can see it okay. Now, you want to get an ice pick, and, and especially in warm weather, you want to get an ice pick and cut many, many, jab many, many holes into this box so they get ventilation. But... This makes a wonderful, uh, lightweight uh, 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 swarm box. Now, uh, if if you have a swarm that 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 you could put this up next to, uh, you might have to build a platform, like take some milk crate, two or three milk crates with you, and and if you can if you can put this this entrance up next to the bees. If you can put this entrance right up next to the bees, they'll start going in there. And it's beautiful to watch them march in there. And and you will start to see all of them just marching right in there like soldiers. So, uh, anyhow, I hope this helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Now, down below, uh, uh, there's a, a, a like, and you can click I like. Of course, I like that if you click I like. And then and then there's a uh, 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 a big rectangular box that says, uh, 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 what does it say? Uh, you know, if you want to join. And uh, so click on that. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you about a good friend of mine. Uh, Bubba and I was I was raised up in Fort Smith, Arkansas with Bubba and uh, You know we went our way and he, he went to Houston and uh, So we stayed in contact. He's such a fine dear friend and uh, wife and I we went to uh, uh, Scotland and uh, Oh, we had a good time and visited the capital uh, uh, of Scotland and Wonderful, wonderful time. Well, I was telling Bubba what a wonderful time we had in Scotland. And so Bubba, uh, he wanted to go. Well, Bubba doesn't like to fly. He will not fly. So he drove his car to New York City and going to catch the boat over to Scotland. And uh, so he pulled in up in front of the bank and uh, went in there. And, and uh, he asked the loan officer, he said, I'm going to go to Scotland, and I need to borrow $5,000. And I don't have an account here, but uh, uh, borrow for a month. And uh, the banker said, well, said, what do you have to put up for collateral? And Bubba says, yeah, that car's out there, my Ferrari. And the banker said, that $250,000 Ferrari? He said, yes. And, and so uh, the banker uh, checked it out, and it all was okay. And he told Bubba that that'd be fine. And uh, the banker, he apologized for uh, uh, the interest being so high, 12.5% interest. And Bubba said, well, that, that's all right. So uh, the banker, he threw the keys to the car attendant and told him to go down there and park it in their private uh, parking place and, and uh, don't get a scratch on it. And um, so uh, when Bubba, Bubba left and got his money and left and all the bankers were, they was all laughing because uh, Bubba borrowed $5,000 and, and left a $250,000 Ferrari for collateral. Well, uh, Bubba went to Scotland, and he come back, and, and he went in there, and 
and uh, told the banker, he, how much did he owe him? He said, $23. And he said, okay. So he paid him. And uh, the banker says, Bubba said, I've got to ask you something. He said, we, we checked you out, and and you're worth a lot of money. You're, you're a, a mini multi-millionaire. You've got property all over the United States and outside the United States, and, and we're just wondering why did you borrow $3,000, $5,000, when you're so wealthy? And Bubba said, well, it's like this. He said, uh, where else in New York City can I park my car for $23 and know it's going to be there when I get back? <laughs> He's smart now. I'm telling you, that's how he got rich, I reckon. All right, y'all have a good day.